Hey y'all, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the concepts of string concatenation and string interpolation, and how to use them to print data back out to the console for the user to read and understand. And then at the end of the video, we're going to finish off this program we started in the last video. Let's get started. Now, string concatenation is basically the merging together of two or more strings to create a new string. And so you can see in our example here, we have a string literal hello and a string literal world and a plus sign in between them. When working with strings, the plus sign signals concatenation. And so it's going to combine the string on the left with the string on the right. And then once it's combined, we'll store that string inside our one variable, and then we'll print that out to the console. And so when we run this program, you can see that that does exactly what it said it would do. Hello, world, nothing else, no spacing in between because we have simply combined those two strings together. Now, string concatenation can also be done with things that are not string literals. So we could say hello and then 42. And string concatenation will convert the 42 from an int literal to a string literal and then combine it to the string. So when we run our program now, we have hello 42. Now when we need to do string concatenation, we are not limited to simply storing multiple strings that we've combined together into a string variable. We can actually do it anytime we have a string literal that needs some data added to it. So if we write console.writeline, and print out a hello message, we can then use the name variable, which we created earlier and stored the user's name in and print that out to the console as well. And this would work fine. We could also then continue to expand upon that and said with a period, how are you doing? And combine another string. And so string concatenation just literally is plus sign, whatever else you want to add into that string, plus sign, whatever else you want to add, so on down the line until you've created the format and the string that you really want. Now string concatenation is a little slow, and so it does create a bunch of new strings every single time you concatenate something. So this isn't always the best way of doing things. There are some string builder classes and things that you get into more in-depth programming that would be better to use but this is one of the most basic functions of using strings. Now, this is a lot more typing, and so we actually have another way of integrating data into strings called string interpolation, which is a little more intuitive and a little faster to code. So with string interpolation, instead of having to end a string literal, put a plus sign, any variables, and then continue on your string literal, you can actually put those variables and even method calls directly into the string without having to break the string literal. The only thing that you need to do differently is put a dollar sign before your string literal marking, and that will tell this string that, hey, it's not just a string literal, we are using string interpolation. And so we could write the same message that we wrote above by simply saying hello, putting a squiggly brace and putting the name variable and then saying, how are you doing? Now you can see that string interpolation is a little less to type and it reads a little more clearly when you're coding it. You can choose between the two, whichever one you want to do will work just fine. However, for the rest of the course, I will probably be using string interpolation since it reads more naturally. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and finish off this program. All right, and to finish off this program, all we're going to do is print the data back out to the console to make the user confirm what it is that we have collected. So we'll delete this useless string concatenation line since we have a string interpolation line saying the exact same thing. And we'll simply put some more console.write lines out there with the user's information. All right, and now that we have put all that information out there, 
at this point in the program, we would ask them, is this correct? And then once this program was fully finished, we would ask them to verify. And if it was correct, we would move on. If it wasn't correct, we would have them re-input that. But that's a little bit more advanced than what we wanted to do now. So now you should have a pretty solid understanding of how to code using variables and taking in and printing out user information. And so in the next video, we'll do a walkthrough of a simple programming assignment that will just test your knowledge and make sure you fully understand. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.